Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. My name is Ashley and look at how stinking cute these bunnies are. I made these bunnies using free shapes within Cricut Design Space. That's right, absolutely free. You don't need a fancy SVG file or Cricut Access in order to make these adorable little bunny cutouts. When you create this really cute bunny cutout within Cricut Design Space, you could choose to cut it out on any material that you want. I personally chose to use my shed free glitter cardstock found in my cardstock warehouse. I'm telling you, this is the perfect spring mix. Absolutely so stinking adorable. Before we get started, I just want to show you the absolute amazingness of my glitter cardstock. If you've never purchased my glitter cardstock before, this right here is 100% shed free. This is my lemon yellow and I'm going to rub real hard. You're going to notice nothing's falling off here and my fingers are clean with not a bit of glitter on there. This is why my cardstock is absolutely the best glitter cardstock that you could possibly buy. So the yellow was lemon yellow. This is going to be my peach color. We have a light pink, mint green, light blue, lavender, and then my glitter cardstock white that I use for the bunny tails. Now I can tell you that over on my cardstock warehouse, I have 30 options with four new options on its way and then also 48 plain cardstock colors and three specialty colors. You're gonna wanna go and check out my cardstock warehouse for all your cardstock needs. All right, are you ready to create the most cutest bunny cutout using free shapes within Cricut Design Space? Let's go. <music> So the very first thing you want to do is open up a blank window in Cricut Design Space. However, for me, these are gonna be our finished bunny cutouts that are absolutely adorable. So for the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna come up here into shapes. Now we are gonna stay in the free section of Cricut Design Space. The very first thing you wanna do is come down here and click this oval. That's gonna insert into your Cricut Design Space. Then what you wanna do is come back over into shapes and we are gonna select this circle. So while we're making the bunny cutout, we're not necessarily worried about what the finished size is going to look like. Right now, we're just worried about the proportions of what our ears, head, and bunny butt is going to look like. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is take this circle and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. This is going to be the head of my bunny. Then I'm going to copy and paste or command C, command V, and I'm going to drag this down to the bottom portion of this circle. This right here is going to be the bunny butt, and I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. Now it's okay if it looks off for right now, we're gonna be able to resize this here in a little bit. We're gonna set things up just so we get the look of what we're going for here doesn't really look much like a bunny, right? So now what I'm gonna do is taking one oval, I'm just gonna resize this to make it look more like an ear. Then what I'm going to do is I need this to be more at a slant, right? Instead of laying down like this. So what I'm going to do is come over here and you can see that my arrow is going in the diagonal direction. But if I hover over just a little bit, you'll see that it turns into a curve. Now what you wanna do is click on your mouse and we are just gonna curve this just a little bit so we kinda of get the look that we're going for. I'm gonna place this one ear just into my bunny head, kind of in the placement that I want. Then what I'm gonna do is just keep resizing this until I get about the look that I want. Okay, when you have one bunny ear looking the way that you want, then what you wanna do is just Command C, and command V or copy and paste. Now, the easiest way to get this to be mirrored is with your pasted new bunny ear, we're gonna come up here into flip and we are gonna flip this horizontal. So the angle of this ear and the angle of that ear is the exact same, it's just mirrored. Okay, we're gonna drag this over into our head and to make sure both our bunny ears are lined up evenly, having selected the copied and pasted ear, I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and also that very first original ear, and I'm going to click align and then align to the top. So you can see now that now both my ears are perfectly 
aligned on top. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could drag these in. I would click on the ears and use my keyboard and just drag them in with my keyboard because I don't wanna mess up the alignment of the tops of my ears. Now what I'm gonna do is clicking on my first original circle. I'm gonna arrange this to the front. Now the beauty of creating a SVG file of your own is that you can create it to look any way that you want. So for me, I want this head to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do is just click on the head and I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller and drag it in there, just kind of eyeballing how I want this to look. Okay, so I think that this is the way that I want my bunny to look. I wanna make sure before doing anything more that my ears are centered to the head and the bunny butt. So what I'm gonna do is select both ears. I'm gonna right click and press group, or you could just do Command G on your keyboard. Now I'm gonna select my grouped ears, my head and my bunny butt, and I'm gonna come up here to align and then center horizontally. So now for sure, all three of these pieces are nice, good, and aligned. Now you can keep rearranging this bunny butt, head, and ears until you get exactly what it is that you're looking for. I personally like the way that this looks. Now, before I do anything more, all I'm gonna do is click one of the circles. It doesn't matter which one you click. And we're just gonna copy and paste and we're gonna drag this over to the side. This is going to be our bunny tail. Then what I'm gonna do is select all three of these pieces, making sure that we like exactly what we see. And we are going to right click and press combine and then weld. And this is our bunny cutout. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Let me change this over into a cute color just so, you know, it just looks a little cuter. I absolutely love this little cutout. Now, just as we did with all the other pieces, we are going to take a free shape, which is that circle, and we're gonna copy and paste that free shape. Now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to fluff up this circle and I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of circles in and we only are worried about the outside of our outline and we're just gonna keep copy and pasting and we're just going to make some fluff. So again, like I said, we are only worried about the outside edge of this weird looking shape right here. Do you see that? It's taken some form. Now I want to take my original circle and just bump it out just a little bit. And you just wanna rearrange all these circles until you get the look that you're going for. Okay, so when you have all your circles placed in the order that you want, then what you wanna do is select all your circles that you have placed and we are gonna right click and press combine and then weld. Now what you could do is select this and make it white. So coming over here into the swatch, we're gonna make this white. And you can place this bunny tail inside your bunny. Now, if you decide that you absolutely hate this bunny tail, you could just keep going back until we get to this section right here and then you could rearrange your circles until you get the look that you're going for. When you get it all arranged, you wanna do the same thing we did before, select all the circles that we used, combine, right click, press combine, and then weld. Turning this over into white over here on the swatch, and we are just gonna make this smaller and fit it onto our bunny butt. Isn't this absolutely adorable? So if you wanted to make a garland like me, all you would need to do is copy and paste one bunny and I'm gonna change this bunny over, so clicking out of it and clicking on our bunny and I'm gonna come up here into the swatch and make it yellow. And you just wanna keep copy and pasting until you have all the bunnies that you want to be able to be cut out. Then what you wanna do is resize this. Now the bunny size I created for my garland are six inches so you just wanna make sure that all your bunny cutouts are set to six inches. When you're done doing that, then you just wanna press make, and then you wanna pull the cardstock that you need for this project. And the next thing you need to do is just press continue on your Cricut, 
And then if you're using my glitter cardstock, I always set my Cricut Explore Air 2 to the cardstock plus mode. I'm just gonna be using some scrap glitter paper for this project. You just wanna insert it into your Cricut. And then you always wanna to come to your computer and click on the fast cut mode on your screen because I personally do not like a slow cutting Cricut. Then you just wanna press the blinking C button. As your cardstock's cutting, you want to prep a second mat. This just keeps our hands busy. This right here is my light pink glitter cardstock. Perfect pastel color for the springtime. So all you want to do now that this is done cutting is eject your mat. You want to insert the next mat into your Cricut. Then what you want to do is press the blinking C button. Now the next mat in our Cricut is going to be light yellow, so I'm gonna prep that mat. When my machine's done cutting, I'm just going to eject and insert my next mat. And then you just wanna keep following the mats that you need on the Cricut, prepping your second mat when this one is cutting. When you're done cutting all your cardstock, all you need to do is press done on your computer and then set your Cricut aside. Assembly of this garland is going to be very easy. All you need to do is take your bunny cutouts that you've created. Then what you're going to do is just line them all up in a nice stack just like this. Then what you want to take is the hole puncher of your choice. The hole puncher that I'm using has a really small hole and I'm just going to put one hole on the top of each ear. Look at that, nice and small, I love it. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to take some foam tape. I like using foam tape because it adds a little bit more dimension to flat cardstock. And all I'm gonna do is taking one bunny and one tail, I'm gonna put these, this foamy on the bunny tail, peel off the paper backing, and I'm gonna put this on my bunny just like that. Look at how stinking cute this is. So with just one little foam tape, we have just a little bit more dimension in our cardstock that just gives it a little bit more fluff and looks so stinking cute. Another thing you can do to add more fluff to our tails is taking a foam piece like this and a fondant rolling tool. We're going to take our bunny tail, putting the glitter portion down flat onto our foam, taking the fondant rolling tool, and we can just roll this. Doesn't look like much, but it's definitely not flat, right? So then what we could do is putting our foam tape, we can put that on the back of the tail and adding that to our bunny tail. This one right here looks like a real cotton tail, and then this one right here ha still has dimension, but is still flat. So creating just a little bit of movement in your cardstock definitely gives it another look. You wanna keep adding tails to all the bunnies that you've created. Look at how stinking cute these bunnies turned out with their little fluffed up tails. I am in love. Okay, so because my holes are so small, with my bunny ears, I am gonna be using an embroidery needle. This thing right here has a larger eye so I can hook in my string, but then also it has a blunt tip so I'm not going to hurt my fingers. I'm gonna take a bit of white satin ribbon. I'm gonna create a tail with my ribbon. That tail is gonna be as long as my wrist to my elbow. So just like that. Then what I'm going to do is string my bunnies onto the string. And I'm gonna go in a pattern because I love patterns. I'm gonna go through the front of the bunny like this, and then through the back like this. And then I'm gonna string all my bunnies onto this one stripe satin ribbon. Okay, when you have all your bunnies strung onto your ribbon, then all you wanna do is take your end of your ribbon, creating another arm's length, tail for your ribbon and cutting off the excess. 
Now look at how cute this finished bunny garland looks. Oh my word, I am so obsessed. Don't you think this project was super easy and it was all using free shapes? I hope I inspired you to create y'all. I'll see you later.